At any one time, just about half the people in the world are trying to lose weight. Yet 95% of people who diet fail to lose that weight and keep it off. Despite that, we keep spending billions of dollars each year looking for a magic bullet. And right now, everyone is talking about Ozempic. So is this drug a game changer? Let's get into it. About 40% of adults in the world are overweight. That's over two and a half billion people. In the last 50 years or so, obesity rates have tripled, largely because calories have become more concentrated and more readily available. Obesity has been called the public health challenge of our times. What? Okay, besides COVID. Obesity leads to mental health consequences because of that weight bias and stigma in our society. And it's also tied to diseases like heart attacks and stroke, high blood pressure and diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and even certain cancers. And then there's the breakdown of joints from carrying that weight, which is called osteoarthritis, and one of the major consequences of that, which is chronic lower back pain. In the US alone, 45 million people try a weight loss plan every year, and a lot of those fad diets actually have negative health consequences because they often lead to these repeated cycles of weight loss and weight gain, which increases the risk of cardiovascular events. And a lot of this is fed by the myth that obesity is a choice, that it's all about food and activity levels, yet we know that it's much more complex than that. Your weight and your body type is very much a function of your metabolic system and ultimately your genes. This is why obesity is considered a chronic medical condition and not a lifestyle choice. Which is also why for years, scientists have been looking for effective ways to help people to lose weight. And up to now, weight loss surgery was really all we had to offer and only in extreme cases. But many people are now saying that all of this has changed. We finally have drugs that can do this effectively and they're called GLP-1 receptor agonists like Ozempic. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide. And this is basically a hormone released by the gut in response to food consumption. And what it does is when you eat and that glucose level goes up in your blood, it tells your pancreas to make more insulin, which then lowers that sugar level. It also inhibits the release of another hormone called glucagon, which normally acts to release sugar into the bloodstream. So by increasing insulin and decreasing glucagon, GLP-1 is very effective at reducing blood sugar levels. And that's why it was initially developed as a drug for people with diabetes. And multiple studies have shown that these drugs very effectively lower sugar levels and they reduce cardiovascular events in people with diabetes. But these trials also showed a very interesting side effect and that is that people taking the drug actually lost weight. And the reason for this is that the drug also does something else. Because your intestines use it as a feedback mechanism to regulate how much food you're eating, GLP-1 actually slows down what's called the motility of the stomach and the intestines, which basically means that it slows down digestion. So food stays in your stomach for longer, which keeps you feeling full for longer, and that means you eat less, and that's how you lose weight. And drug companies are very opportunistic, so they took advantage of that side effect, and then they designed trials to see if these drugs can actually help anyone, including people who don't have diabetes, to lose weight. And the first major trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in March of last year, and I'd say it was a game changer. They took almost 2,000 adults who were either obese, meaning they had a body mass index or BMI of 30 or higher, or they had a BMI of 27 or higher and at least one complication related to their weight, such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, or cardiovascular disease. And what's important is that none of these people had diabetes. Two thirds of them got the drug, in this case, a GLP-1 receptor agonist called semaglutide or Ozempic, and one third got placebo. And they all got weight loss counseling along with a diet plan and an exercise plan. And over 68 weeks, this is what happened. So the top line is how much people in the placebo group dropped their weight, in this case, 2.4% of their body weight. And the bottom line is how much those who took the drug lost, in this case, it was 14.9% of their body weight by week 68. And that difference was 12.4% of body weight, or on average, 28 more pounds lost in people who took Ozempic. Along with that, there was also lower blood pressure, better physical functioning, better mental functioning, and lower blood sugar. In fact, over 80% of people who had prediabetes went back to being normal when they took the Ozempic. And they've repeated this trial in different groups of patients in different parts of the world, and the results are pretty consistent. Over about 16 months, people lose about 10% more of their body weight with the drug compared to a placebo. And the weight loss actually continues on this drug 
for over a year after you start it. In one study, it didn't actually plateau until about week 60, and in another study, the weight stayed off even two years into taking the drug. There just haven't been any drugs in the past that have come even close to this level of impact. And Ozempic isn't the only option. Although it's the best studied drug, there are recently published trials of other drugs in the same class, and we will probably see many other drugs like this approved in the next few years. But there are drawbacks. First of all, most of these agents have to be administered subcutaneously, which means that it's a tiny needle just under the skin. So if you don't like needles, this isn't for you. Also, what happens when you stop the drug? We know from a recent trial that people who stopped the drug did gain back some of the weight they had lost over the next few months, so it's not a sustained benefit. It helps you while you're on it, but it does seem to wear off when you stop it. And the other question is side effects. So the good news is that we've been using these drugs in diabetes for over 15 years, so we have a pretty good understanding of their safety and side effect profile. The most common side effects are things like nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and constipation. The other thing to keep in mind is that weight reduction is great as long as it's mostly fat that you're losing as opposed to muscle and bone. So we still need to understand the pattern of weight loss that happens from these drugs and also what impact they might have on our bone mineral density. The last thing is that they're very expensive. If you're getting it for diabetes, you might have insurance coverage and people who are obese or have weight related complications might also have coverage. But a lot of people who don't actually meet those criteria are still taking this drug. And that's what we call off-label use. And that means that a whole lot of people are using it simply to lose weight, which has created shortages for people with diabetes who rely on the drug for their disease. This has also led to a black market for the drug, and that's driven prices as high as $1,200 to $1,500 a month. And there is a higher dose version of Ozempic called Wagovi, which is actually marketed for weight loss, but that also is very hard to find right now. And a big part of this is celebrity culture and social media. So for example, Kim Kardashian lost about 20 pounds very quickly for the Met Gala this year, and then a whole bunch of people started suspecting that Ozempic was her secret, and that led to a frenzy on social media. And if you look up Ozempic on TikTok today, you will see over 300 million views. Elon Musk is another celebrity who used it, and then he started promoting it on his social media platform. You might have heard of it, it's called Twitter. And now we're being told that celebrities are actually using this drug as part of their grooming routine for events, kind of like how they use Botox. But of course that leads to a yo-yoing of their weight, which is not a good thing. On the other hand, if these drugs are used properly, they have amazing potential. Even small amounts of weight loss can improve things like quality of life, mental health, mobility, and even sexual function. When you get to about 10% weight loss, you start seeing improvements in things like sleep apnea and fatty liver. And at 15% weight loss, some people will actually see their diabetes disappear and they'll start lowering their chances of a heart attack or stroke. GLP-1 receptor agonists like Ozempic are game-changing drugs, so much so that they are now recommended in medical guidelines as a weight loss option. In an ideal world, healthy eating and active living would keep us all at a healthy and happy weight. And we do need to keep working on those, but for a lot of people, these drugs are the magic bullet that they've been waiting for. For more health and science content, subscribe to the feed.